بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you guys all had a good lunch and are feeling energized for uh, the second half of today. So now that we're finished feeding our body, let's continue feeding our soul because indeed the food of the soul is even more important than that of the body. All right? Uh, just a few announcements. If ladies and gentlemen could please uh, have your phone on uh, silence. Uh, or worst case, vibrate. That would be appreciated because sometimes we hear WhatsApp uh, <laughs> feeds coming in. Now, I hope you guys are all ready for this next performance. Um, he's a man of many talents. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Baraka Blue. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. I'm going to recite a few pieces of poetry, inshallah, and then the uh, other speakers will be coming up, and then I believe we'll be closing this uh, this afternoon with a collective question and answer session for for some discussion. But inshallah, I just wanted to begin with a few pieces of poetry. The first one is called A Station Called Patience. And I think it ties in with a lot of the things we've been discussing uh, in life, because life, uh, this weekend rather, because life will bring us uh, all circumstances in which our patience is tested. But Allah speaks about the patient ones being uh, the righteous. So this is called a station called Patience. There was a station called Patience that few had attained. Most got off before that stop and only knew it in name. Those who basked in the sun but didn't care for the rain were perplexed at those few who remained on the train, paid them no mind, and were blind to the secrets they knew, like the brightest color hides in the deepest of blues. For opposite the direction most people pursue, there is a station called patience, only known by a few. It may not have neon lights, or the games that amuse, but its beauty exceeds everything that they knew. The other stations always look shiny and new, but this station looks simple and hidden from view. Those who found patience seem to find it by chance. Perhaps they fell asleep on the train and woke up in its trance. Maybe a dream they had seen where the question was asked, is there more to this place than appears at first glance? Some were forced there when the cost of living was high, where the struggles and the troubles had chased them inside. But those who entered her tavern and drank from her wine found the place they called, state, they called patience was a station divine. For what looked to be ruins to the ones that passed by, as they scoffed or they pitied those living inside, patience people looked back and they pitied their pride, which veiled them from seeing what only patience could reveal or could hide. Patience is a trust the other stations refused, it infuses and transforms mortal vision anew. Patience is not merely waiting, though they're often confused. Patience is a station you awaken into. Once you know the one for whom patience is due, you see a mysterious relation between patience and you. Like a long lost memory, that finally came into view, you'll see that patience has been patiently waiting for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم um this poem is called drawing muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wasallam and it was actually written in the aftermath of a few years ago there was a draw muhammad uh, cartoons and uh, then there was protests then there was counter protests and then there was counter counter protests and etc down the line and what i didn't see was a prophetic response what i didn't see was how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam might have responded to that and of course what i thought about was that this this line came to my head that i've been trying to draw muhammad into my heart for all these years and the only one that protested was my ego <laughs> so then i wrote this poem it's called drawing muhammad Can you draw the prophet? Could you draw the jewel at the center of the lotus blossom of beginningless being if you wanted? Can you draw the bucket from the well of existence until you've exhausted every droplet? Draw the breath into your lungs and let your tongue draw Muhammad. Can you draw the light as it enters your optics? Can you draw the thought as it enters your conscience? Can you draw the light that drew the pen and the tablet and drew his praises upon it? Draw the breath into your lungs and exhale. Amen. Can you draw the sun in its glory? Can you draw the colors in autumn? Draw the bucket from the well of existence till you've exhausted every droplet. Then draw your lips to the cup of praise and sip what is offered. But you will still have not approached the topic of the form, let alone the meaning of Muhammad. Can you draw what he heard in the cave? Can you draw the two bows distance what was witnessed by the praised prophet slave? May you be drawn to his banner when you raise from your grave. Could you draw a heart that could bear the weight of the name? Can you draw a mother's love for her child? Can you draw the calm in the midst of the wild can you draw forgiveness for your rabid oppressors and those who tried to murder you for sharing your message those who mocked you violently in your absence and presence draw the way he used their hatred to transmit a lesson draw peace in his heart smiling at those seeking a fight knowing even those who attack him are made of his light you could draw the full moon in all of its glory but to behold his countenance is a whole different story you may not be able to draw this but the best place to start is to draw his remembrance into your heart is the moon offended by the bark of dogs in the dark or does his light embrace all creatures just like the ark you may not be able to draw him but the best place to start is to draw his attributes inward that is the ark If all the nows in eternity and infinity conspired to draw the prophet 
they would prostrate to the throne of divinity in awe and incapacity before their pens hit paper. In the ancient gatherings of the prophets and sages, all tongues fell silent before they exhausted his praises. And for those veiled from his light by their hatred, we should weep in the depths of the night in prostration, that they no longer be deprived of the gift so sacred, gazing upon his face, best of creation. So yes, brothers and sisters, let's all draw the prophet. Draw the breath into your lungs, and on the canvas of your soul, let love draw Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, inshallah, I'm just going to close with one more poem, and then uh, we'll get to the, the workshops, inshallah. Bismillah. Are there any mothers here? Raise your hand if you're a mother. MashaAllah, thank you for blessing us with your presence. And uh, for everyone feeling left out now, it's not a mother. Raise your hand if you're a child of a mother. Alhamdulillah. So this is for all of us then. To those mothers who buttered sandwiches and lit love's lanterns when sweet dreams turned to nightmares and cloaked us in radiant safety net bear hugs under covers, and sacrificed many a night's sleep like a coat over a puddle so our pillows stay dry, and evaporated tears when we would cry, and smiled at the clouds till they bowed gracefully to a blue sky. To those mothers who allowed faces to hide in pant legs when we were shy, from strangers or neighbors or distant family members who just came to say hi, and who explained with true amazement the transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly. To those mothers who butter sandwiches and read books over and over again until she could noose Dr. Seuss. But when that Please, mommy, please. Eyes plead, mouth squeeze, chubby cheeks, gap teeth. Her heart melts, and she reads. Just one more time. And those words become sweet in her mouth because that warm ball of innocent trust in her curls up on her shoulder, and she knows no sound sweeter than hearing him breathe. And when the breathing gets deep, she looks deep into that glowing innocence and her heart weeps with overwhelming mercy. For she is accessing the feeling nearest to God a human being can experience. Love. Unconditional mercy. Compassionate love. True, selfless, gentle, nurturing, life-giving, soul-cleansing, spirit-raising love. For those mothers who butter sandwiches and taught young boys in a society so sick and deprived of love to love. And young girls to find love deep within themselves and watered seeds to full-flown flowers unfolding petals gracefully in concrete habitats and old rusty ramshackle shacks in any desert or countryside anywhere and everywhere that mothers butter sandwiches or split coconuts or make curries or milk goats or steam rice or warm bottles on stoves or in microwaves or hang clothes on lines in the sunshine. This is for those mothers who raise children to be lovers and let youngins hog all the covers, who go to sleep last making school lunches, who wake up first making breakfast and assembling outfits, who struggle and strain and bear the pain and don't complain but smile. And this is for mothers who had to be fathers and mothers and had to hide tears because there was no time for her own when she was wiping away everyone else's. 
This is for mothers who never knew selfish and never felt they deserved a congratulations or a celebration or a high station or a standing ovation. But you do. All of you. And this is for mothers who bore abuse, both physical and mental, from men who had mothers too, who raised them like you, but forgot what you taught. And this is my pledge. I will not forget. For every woman is a potential mother and is a daughter who was an innocent ball of trust who was held by a mother who buttered sandwiches, if she was lucky. And if not, all the more reason to treat her like a mother would treat her who loved her and peanut buttered sandwiches. And this is for my mother the one I owe love to because you are the one I know love through. You are the closest thing I've ever known to purity, to sincere, overwhelming, overpowering, unconditional love and mercy overflowing from your heart through your eyes when you look at me. Everything good in me is from you. And it is such an understatement to say, but it is the most powerful thing mere language can convey. I love you. I love you all too. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah.